Hello, welcome to the Steam Release Podcast, the show where we go through the release list so that you don't have to. Uh, I'm your host, Dewey Bear, and joining me today is the delightful, the mysterious, the rouge... Mm, ah, man, the the roguish rouge Rody Pie. <laughs> Yes. Hey, hi. I Thanks flubbed for it having a bit. Me. But there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, welcome, welcome. And of course, joining us, you know him, you love him. It is the Radio Tom. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. Oh, yes. It's good to have you back. It's always good to have you back. At this point, <laughs> like I can I I feel like we shouldn't be calling you guest host, but maybe like junior co-host or something. <laughs> junior co-host. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that could work. I feel like Spider-Man, who's always trying to join the Avengers, but like he only gets in there on like crisis situation. Then he's not an Avenger anymore. And I'm feeling right now. Just swing in. Hey, it's your friendly neighborhood radio, Tom. Yeah. Well, you've got the like quips, so you've got that. That's all you need to be a superhero. That's true. That's a good quips. <clears throat> Anyhow, um, first topic of the day. Uh, what have y'all been up to? So we're gonna go ahead and start with uh, Rody Pie. What has your last couple weeks been? Ooh, so I, I with my bum arm and um, and lately uh, a cold. I haven't really been playing too much, but I did um, do a hidden object game. So I Ooh. played Endless Fables Two, Frozen Path, and. Huh. Um, yeah, it was it was it was okay. It was a bit of uh, Norse mythology. Um, she's always always an an interesting thing. Um, bit of an interesting story, but it was very very quick and easy to get through. So um, I think I think it just took me a couple of nights to to finish it. But yeah, the, it, it looks it looks very nice as well. I think I think the the artwork for it was was really beautiful so yeah i was i was quite i was quite impressed by it another one published by artifex mundi yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. and um of course i was playing final fantasy 11 and um 14 i nipped into as well um i'm trying to get this um purple gear it looks like red mage gear but it's mm -hmm. purple in 11 and I need three more, three more pieces. I've gotten all the weapon parts from this fight, all the accessories from this fight. I just need the hat, the chest, and the boots. All I need, and then I'm, I will look fabulously purple. Yes, which is, you know, obviously a prior priority. It doesn't matter what the stats are. It's how you look. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was just that does just reminded me. Both my older sister and one of my cousins went through like a purple phase where everything mm -hmm. had to be purple, and that just had uh, that memory. And it was funny because like after a certain year number of years, they both hate purple. Like they're like nothing is purple. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like that's so funny. Uh, I was just thinking, I was like, ah, oh, everything is purple. Oh mm. my God. So, uh, Radio Tom, what about you? What has your last couple weeks been? Um, it's been a lot of Magic the Gathering Arena now that that's out of beta. Um, that, that, that's on the full release, free to play. Uh, of course, I, I love my board and my card games, and I was never a big Magic the Gathering fan, but give me a digital version, and it's like, okay, I'm going to get into this a little bit more. So I, I've been playing the Daylights out of that, a lot more Binding of Isaac, and then, of course, now that we're into the spoopy, scary uh, time of the year of October, uh, I decided to play some Outlast uh, the other day. Never, never had seen it. Never had played it before. Uh, I needed a few change of pants, but uh, good times. <laughs> mm -hmm. I did watch <sighs> you play a bit of Outlast, and I, whenever I join someone in their Twitch to, when they're playing Outlast, I can't last for long because it, it like I'm not very good with scary games, so I'm like, oh, I want to support you. <laughs> I can't watch them. <laughs> Nope. Sorry, I had to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, because yeah, you you came in when we were in the library and we we saw like the bodies from the ceiling. I was mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, yep, yeah, uh, there goes Rody. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, 
sorry. <laughs> horror games freak me out. There's like, although I will watch Greg play horror games because he gets way more scared than me. So it's like, it's almost comforting. It's just like, ah! like just see this other person scream and it's like, oh, okay, this this feels better. <laughs> um, But yeah, oh, oh, it's so scary. Anyhow. But yeah, yeah. Um, I I would per- wouldn't personally be doing horror games unless uh, it's for very good cause, <laughs> and people are donating a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> that's I think that's the only reason I'd get into that. But yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I I think it, that would be the same for me if it was like you know I, I was doing it for a reason. Otherwise, no. I I, I just I don't I don't think I could just put myself through that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to get my blood pressure lower before I start to do horror game <laughs> streams for charity. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> All right. As for me, I have uh, a quite a gaming adventure to talk about, actually. Mm. So uh, another streamer just kind of randomly gifted me a game called uh, Grim Dawn. It is an ARPG in the um in the spirit of torchlight 2 um diablo of course and it's sort of set in this like 1600s fantasy world so um so basically like i think that would be georgian england i mean it would be before that so but it's not england it's not set in a real world but basically people are getting possessed and you have to like go kill things so you know that that that's it's really fun it's a really great rpg it's so superbly polished and right. i'm having a blast in it it's really really fun so uh and and i got it for free because it was a gift so i'm like yeah this is this is all a lot but yeah i'm gonna be streaming this game probably for the next couple months because it's a huge game but i'm not tired of it yet so Yep. Oh, God. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Someone gifted it to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so it is excellent. So if anyone else, uh, if anyone else has played Grim Dawn, just go ahead and tell us in the chat what your favorite build was. But yeah, because Commando. Oh, Commando is so good. <laughs> uh, another yeah. little side thing. Kudos to their gun sounds because guns in games can often be like too loud, and it really bothers me. But these mm. ones, there's the Bane, but it's like a bit more powdery like how do i how do i don't not sure how to explain it but it's it's not as like sharp it's not as sharp of a sound it's more dispersed yes it has a more dispersed mm. noise and it's a lot easier for me to deal with so oh, okay. yep nice so yeah it looks really good like graphically it looks really nice sort of divinity original sin vibes is what mm. i'm getting in from yeah it. Mm. Mm. But yeah. Um, oh, and I interrupted you, Radio Tom. No, no, no. I was just going to make a terrible uh, commando joke. So you're a fine. commando joke? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Then that was probably a good thing that I did interrupt you. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> so mean. Uh, oh, so okay to- I'm doing horror you. games in VR? No. No. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, so with that, uh, that was what we played this last week. I do have... Uh, before we get into the honorable mentions, I sort of have... It maybe could be an honorable mention, but it's kind of also news. Uh, okay. There is this game called Noita. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this title is in early access. Um, so normally we don't talk about these. But what's interesting about this one is the developer of Baba is You, RV Teikari, the dev of S- The Swapper, Ollie Harjola, and the dev of Cran Physics Deluxe, Petri Perho, are developing this. And this is a uh, pixel simu- um Every pixel is simulated, so each pixel has its own set of uh, physics, physics rules, depending on what the pixel's material is supposed to be. So it is really cool like a really cool high concept thing yeah let's see now he does a magical action roguelike in the world where every pixel is physically simulated find explore melt burn freeze and evaporate your way through the procedurally generated world using spells you've created yourself Yep, and it follows a sort of roguelite rule set where you know you'll you'll get some spells you'll use them and but the thing is you never know what a spell does until after you 
try it. You might have a guess based on like the laws of physics that you're dealing with. But you know, some spells will just like blow you up and you're like, oh, that that I shouldn't do that here. <laughs> Cause you might be in a room filled with a flammable gas or something. Yeah. So. I I really like I really like this. It's just like because you usually spells just used to used on the enemy rather than actually uh, with and... the entire environment. It's incredible. It's like they're one upping um, Magicka a little bit, where because on that one, of course, like you're you're combining spells, you you can bounce off of other people, certain things interact with things in a different way, but normally never terrain. Like there was a little bit like where you were using ice to get across water, but not like this. So mm -hmm. it's it's so very creative, and I, I think it's just an awesome idea. And I'm really looking forward to if this does well, which I think it might, because it already has 1,700 positive reviews. Um, and apparently, the game is basically complete. The only thing that's going to be different from this and the full game is there's actually going to be uh, some more enemy variety. But you can finish the game in the current state. Mm -hmm. So. Some more polish and more enemy variety, more material variety, more events, that kind of stuff. Gotcha. So just to flesh it out some more. But yeah. Uh, and hi, yeah. Justin. Thanks for joining us. Oh, um, Justin, <laughs> hello. So yeah, that is Noita. I'm quite excited for it because I've mm. played. Uh, I've only played Cran Physics Deluxe. My suspicion is that's their physics guy. <laughs> because <laughs> the other ones like like baba is you it's just it feels like a sort of an avengers type thing where three indie devs who each made a game are all coming combining their powers to make a new game it's, it's just a cool With our powers cool combined we will make <laughs> noita <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like it i don't know if it's noita or noita i feel like it's noita i don't know but that's just my weeb coming through I'm like, oh, this is how you properly pronounce Jap. I don't know if it's a Japanese word, so I, I should just shut up. Mm. Could be Noita. But, or Noata if it's French. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that is Noita. Um, one other piece of news is we do have a curator page, which, uh, let me see, groups. Here we go. I'll, I'll paste it in the, in the chat. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's the curator page. Um, we've been reviewing a bunch of uh, titles, and a lot of it has been more informational. But for stuff that we do have personal experience with, we we only have so many hours in the day, but we are trying. Um, we uh, will be adding recommendations, positive, negative, that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah. Um, so if you want to just sort of see a summary of all the games we talked about, we don't have quite have all of them up there yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> well, so we're going back retroactively in all of our past shows as well. So it's quite a task. But um, yeah, you can go and see what games we talked about. So and if you follow that, you can sort of get caught up on, hey, what did they talk about this last week, kind of thing. So yeah, yeah, um, and we'll be um, adding lists as well. So if there's that you know, we we always talk about. Oh well, maybe you know we need to make a list for raccoon protagonists and things like mm -hmm. that. We we are we are adding lists like that. Mm -hmm. So do 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 keep keep checking if you if you already um have followed us, but please please do follow. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. So and that is our curator page. <clears throat> uh, do do doop. All right. So. Uh, our next step is to go straight up to uh, honorable mentions. Yes, once I can get these open. There we go. Voila! All right, so our first honorable mention is Palmyra Orphanage by Step Hair Studio. Take it away. Yay! Pa paranormal first-person horror, which takes place in abandoned orphanage. Walk through the corridors of your childhood, but do remember that you're not only one here. So. <laughs> Definitely a little bit of a translation issue, but... Um, well, it looks spooky. It looks like a game I won't play. <laughs> As we were talking about earlier with horror games. Yeah. yeah I'm just wondering it's... if Oh, I'm sorry, so Tom. sorry. I, I was just wondering if this is a walking sim or if there's more to it than that, because it, it, it looks spoopy, it looks scary. Uh, it, it checks the couple of boxes there for me. 
Uh, he's always there. Stealth mechanics will challenge your skills. It requires careful uh, throw and attention to every step. They, 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 they need an English friend to help them with their description. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... Well, there will be jump scares, and it looks like there's at least some chases uh, involved in this. Uh, do do do. do. I, but yeah. Um, this one I thought would be best on the honorable mentions because you know, like there's the English is is a bit isn't so great. Also, it's only an hour and a half long. Oh, it is really short then. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, oh. I, I would think if you go, um. D depending, you know, depending on how fast obviously you're walking through it, but it's like an hour and a half to two hours. But yeah, it's um, but from what I've seen in in the reviews, people are you know really enjoying this. Um, it's not just you know a lot, a lot of people put up sp spooky games, those those sort of like first mm -hmm. person uh horror games, and they're just really they're just really all. But no, people mm -hmm. are really having a good time with this one. The uh, the one negative I ran into was uh, someone was saying that you couldn't save your state during the game if you exit and come back. You're at the beginning. I'm like, well, if it's a short game, then maybe. But I don't want to look frustrating. Again. But the the dev actually responded to them as well, saying they use an auto save function that saves your progress during certain parts of the game. Uh, so oh well, and yeah, they gave an email address to say like, hey, if you're still having issues, get Give us a, uh, give us an email and we'll help you out. So they're they're being actually proactive here in the comments with their negative reviews. Oh, mm -hmm. That's really good. I yeah, do it's like a good that. Mm. <clears throat> um, with it being, I feel like with it being a shorter game, with it having positive reviews, even though it is like six dollars for about an hour and a half for a horror game, if it actually gives you that horror environment. It might actually be worth it if it does for people looking for that sort of thrill because mm. maybe an hour and a half is just about the right dose <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I, and i mean keep in mind most horror movies are about an hour and a half of time so it, it kind of mm. fills that time slot um looking at like going through the thumbnails and uh everything there there's a few things that look a little off like i, I i'm loving like the wall textures and all that uh, but I, like I, I see that one thumbnail with the sink with uh, what's supposed to be blood going into it, and it just it, it looks more like barbecue sauce. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and the lighting effects and the um, and some of the props I feel like aren't properly affected by the lighting. Because for example, in this screen right here, when this we have this little screen, uh, the, there's these bright green things, even though there's not much light. It's like mm. so even brightly colored things in a dark room or in a, like a uh, if you're trying to give the element of like a darker room, they shouldn't be brilliantly colored. Like that requires a lot of ambient light. So yeah. it does bother me a little bit. The um, the, on, the only caveat to that is if those are interactable items instead, uh, where true, they have true. them actually stick out. Because uh, uh, that, that's usually one of the hardest things to balance in a horror game are things that you can actually interact with and things you mm. cannot. So sometimes mm. things that uh, kind of stick out like a sore thumb don't interact with the lighting could just be their way of saying, hey, this is something you can mess with. Mm -hmm. Come on over here and click this. I, I'm doubting that's the case, but I'm, I'm trying to give a little benefit of the doubt. Yep. Alrighty. Um, and we <laughs> our second honorable mention, uh, you're going to love this, is... Uh, <laughs> I love you, Colonel Sanders, a finger-looking good dating simulator by PsyOp and published by KFC. Welcome to the most delicious dating sim ever created. Do you have what it takes to be the business partner of and win the heart of the most famous chicken salesman of all time? Play to find out. Go ahead. Colonel Sanders is waiting. <laughs> Oh my god, I, I see so many people talk about this. Um I I mean is this guy it, it it's on my wish list. <laughs> but only putting it in the um honorable mentions because it is it is already very popular with people yeah. because it's and, like, and it's corporate ridiculous. advertising, but you know what? Yeah. It's pretty funny corporate advertising. It's like you yeah. know what? You know what? You understand your target audience. <laughs> so yeah. good job. <laughs> I don't know there's, if this is going to get people to eat more chicken, though. 
Oh no! You mm. never know. People, you know, play. Put this on. Have some fried chicken while you're playing it. Really immerse yourself in it. Oh yeah. Um, I, I'm getting the uh, issue here. Apparently, you don't get to have relations with uh, Colonel Sander. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm already uh, negatively voting this game, and it, it, <laughs> this thing has been all over YouTube uh, lately. Which it's I, I I've I've watched quite a bit of this, and it actually is hilarious. Yeah. And it's free. It's, it's free. free. Yeah. It's free. It's funny. So there's no reason not to check it out. Exactly. Um, exactly. But oh, yeah. there's um, many reasons not. Well, to. there's many reasons not to. <laughs> you you might have a, like something else you would want to do for those next few hours. But yeah. But the thing is, it doesn't seem like very long either. Like right. it, it seems like um, no. to about two hours ish. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So yeah, no reason. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love this video. I'm not gonna read it. But that's fun. I, I, I've i seen like the the positive negative reviews uh -huh. of it and pe people have just gone gone all out <laughs> oh, it, it's been pure troll mode in yeah. uh, oh, the, yeah. the reviews down here and I'm totally okay with this yep. yeah yeah my word so oh, good job good job there was, a, there was huh? a finger licking good comment in here no. there was of course no. there's, there's gonna be a lot of them yeah <laughs> I love it. <laughs> all right, all right. So we have some releases that we do actually like have on our official list. Mm -hmm. um, we're done with the honorable mentions. Not too many this time. It's actually been a pretty quiet two weeks for releases, but we still have plenty of games to talk about. So uh, our next title is called Applewood. Discover the true meaning of apples in this charming adventure platformer. Yeah, pretty short and sweet. So this is just a this is just sort of a physics type platformer where you're just a little cat, and you throw items that weigh various amounts, and you make them hit things. And it's it's just very simple. It's very pure. Uh, and you know what charmed me? It charmed me. It is it is a little bit. Uh, how do I say it? Um, je ne sais quoi. This is very, it's very, not. I'm not going for crunchy, because I feel like the, the the lack of animation fits the art style. Mm. Yeah. It's, and, it's, yeah. It's an offshoot of crunchy. I, I, it's, it's exa I, I was trying to figure out the word for it. And I was Retro. Like, no. 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 It, it, it reminds, unless you're going to say retro in the way of like the old games that you could get from like Burger King, McDonald's, mm. like way back when, or like, uh, the Noid game from Domino's of like, hey, we 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 gave like a grad student a couple bucks to make a game, and there they, it looks like there's so much promise, but it's just it's it's a little little rough around the edges. Mm, yeah. Oh yeah, it does look like it. Um, well, on the bright side, it definitely looks like it was hand drawn. I don't think this is any borrowed assets. No. Um, but uh, it's just, it, I just like that it just took a very simple concept and just to kind of expand on that. And that seems to be the entire game. It's probably just a few hours of enjoyment, but um, it's only asking $5.99 US. So, um, yeah. uh, oh, and there's on Octopus. Let me see, is it going to show up again? Yeah, it, yeah. It, uh, the, that Octopus reminded me of the, the Trouble, uh, the Trouble King from... Uh, Shovel Knight. Oh, yeah. And there's also a red octopus in Shantae. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that red octopus boss. Um, I'm seeing, like, up to six... Well, more than that, but... Um, hmm. Because there's, like, someone with 23 hours, but I don't know. Is it... I, hmm, that seems really long. Like someone accidentally left the game up for a day. Uh, yeah. Was, oh, okay. okay. It's really were... about 12 hours. Oh, okay. Okay. So there we go. Oh, wow. Not bad for a six dollar game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there were no reviews when I first found this game, so I really had no idea. But yeah. Uh, yeah, they said they said how long is it? It usually takes a person around four to six hours to complete their first run of the main story. A hundred percent completion takes a bit longer than that and currently seems to require around nine to ten hours. Mm -hmm. so, that's good. And this is a one-person project. It's uh, created by Garrett Thompson of Maryland, USA. Awesome. Mm. But yeah. But the, more, 
the more I see of this, like the more I'm charmed by this. Mm. Right, like right away, the first impression was a little rough, mm. but I don't know. Like, it, it looks kind of cute. And to be fair, that was my first impression as well. When I first looked about it, it was kind of like I don't know. But then I kept looking, and I was like, uh, you know. You know, that's really sweet. Like yeah. the, the more I looked at it, there was like, uh, you know, it just because this is an example where you don't really need like crazy chops, but as long as it's consistent and it all kind of seems to fit, yeah. it really starts to come together more and more. And then it, that actually takes quite a bit of artistic skill to sort of maintain that same style. So I I quite like it. Uh, I do believe this is Garrett's. Yes, this is Garrett Thompson's first game as well. So, it, but yeah, it like, was like, it was kind of slowly grew on me. I like the health bar. Oh yes, that's the little fun. yeah, that's cute. <laughs> yes, cute. It, yeah, it, it's adorable and um, like you said, it's it's got a lot of charm. So mm. yeah, yeah, it's like an onion. There was a lot of little things that gradually mm. built up to it for me. So. Yeah. But it definitely takes a while looking at it. But yeah, that is Applewood. <sighs> Our next title is from Tuesday, September 24th. And it is, well, for the folks who have been here before, you may remember Cat Quest. Uh, we now have Cat Quest 2. Electric Boogaloo. Following the phenomenal, phenomenal success of Cat Quest, developers The Gentle Bros returned to the world of Feeling God, a fantastical land under threat from a continuing war. Mm hmm. And you get to play a little doggo as well. So. Yay! <laughs> doggo. Uh, again, like, it looks. The gameplay looks very similar to the first game. But I will say the art uh, uh, and animation has taken a step up. Uh, and this definitely at least looks more appealing because the original game seemed a bit more casual gameplay style than this. Mm. But from what I've you know seen of the gameplay videos of this, I was just like, ooh, ooh, this looks, uh, this looks significantly more interesting than the first one. Although the first one was adorable as well, and I have weakness for cats, so... Uh, and it looks like, yeah, it's uh, one to two player, but it is local co-op. Mm -hmm. mm. It looks like it would be like, a, you know, that kind of art style that's a mobile phone game. It mm -hmm. kind of looks like that. It does. I, I'm trying to remember. Was the first game also on mobile? Uh, let me see. Uh, this is by the Gentle Bros. Um, oh, and they're from Singapore, by the way. They've made... Oh, they also made... Uh, oh, wait, no. Is this the publisher? Oh, P-Cube. Okay. It goes to their publisher page. So, um, so P-Cube has published quite a few other games that we've talked about. But, um, but yeah, I think... I almost want to say this is available on mobile. Mm. But I'm not sure. So... Uh, but mobile phones are getting really powerful, so something like this would be pretty easy to be on there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it looks really cute. And that's uh, £12.99. Mm -hmm. uh, $14.99 US. Uh, and judging by how long the previous game was, it's probably a decent deal for that. It is a it is a ARPG, even if it's a bit of a casual ARPG. So... Cat Quest. Ooh, doo -doo -doo. All right. Our next title is Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. Generations of Power Rangers collide across the multiverse's 25 year history. Experience authentic but reimagined Power Rangers gameplay. This easy to learn but hard to master fighting game is designed to welcome players of all skills. And I know this is uh, the PC port of the console version of the game that's been out for a while. Oh, really? Okay. I had no idea that the console game had come out. So, I was unaware. Hmm, cool. But yeah, it is by Inway Incorporated. And this is their first game on Steam. So, uh, but yeah. So, it's been it's been a long time since I've seen one of these titles. So, oh, that's cool. Unfortunately, it's not gotten a lot of attention on uh, Steam yet. No, it's because, uh, yeah, j just from the 24th and e even the council version, would it, it just kind of got thrown in there a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's It's been one that I've been following for a while. I'm already not a fan of how much they're charging for individual character DLCs. Like there's mm -hmm. uh, the Gen Scots, the mm -hmm. Time Force Pink Ranger for six bucks. 
a gold Zeo Ranger for six, Lord Zed for six. Like for each character, six bucks on top of the twenty dollars you're getting for the base game. I don't like that part. I don't like mm-hmm. that part at all. Um, if those were much less, or if there was a good like bundle for everything, maybe because like, and I know like fighting games, that's it kind of where they they're making their money anymore as DLC characters mm-hmm. and all that. But ah, that is real bothersome for me right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some sort of bundle or deluxe edition might be more tolerable. So, uh, but yeah. Um, and of course, like, this is a situation where if it's been out for a while, these DLCs, and they could have just released a sort of ultimate edition. Um, yeah, and that might have even been more more approachable then. Yeah. But yeah, it's, a th- it's three-on-three combat, much like a Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, at least th- uh, those games you can mix up. You you get both heroes, villains, and like what they say all across the uh, the Power Rangers multiverse, including the comics, because I know they have uh, Lord Draken in there as well. If you can't tell, I, I like the Power Rangers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel so. like uh, I saw some of them like when I was nine. <laughs> that, was, that was back. That was back in my day, and it was just like. It is kind of cool though. It is. Uh, it was uh, almost all the stunt actors in Hollywood. Like this is where they got their start. So, uh, but um, yeah. at, at least judging on how everything looks and how I've seen it play and all that, it it looks like a good solid mm-hmm. fighting game. It's just they're they're nickel and diming on DLC content. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, and it's uh, nineteen ninety nine US for the game, and then yeah, it's a uh, five ninety nine for the additional um, characters, yeah. uh, which I think they have uh, five additional characters, and then they got four that are NA. Oh, I guess you can get them uh, if you do all DLC. Three, four, f- uh, five. Yeah, so it's got five, and then there's somewhere I think they're just included, or that that might have been like a a limited time release mm, so maybe to have, like get, get it before the game's out okay yeah. that might be Oof. it's um 15 pound 49 uh, mm-hmm. for uk um buyers and uh the dlc each is four pound 79 mm-hmm. yep so, yeah. and 86 percent positive so um our next title is did I spell this right? <laughs> Flinguin Station? Yeah, I did. Okay, that is how it is. That is how it's spelled. Okay. Uh, it is Flying Wind Station. Oh, man. I feel like uh, Benedict Cumberbatch trying to say uh, Penguin uh, <laughs> Station is a casual projectile endless runner game with RPG elements. Save the penguins by rediscovering the secrets of flight. Fly as, fly as far as possible. Level up. Upgrade your penguin. Customize him to your liking. So this just looks like one of those very simple uh, launch games. Get as far as you can. Upgrade your stuff to go further. Mm-hmm. Like you used to always see on like mobile or like old flash games. Yeah, I when I saw this, I was like, I wasn't I wasn't sure about this. So because the um, the um, cutscene looked like it was done very well, but the actual flying. Oh yeah, thing, the actual gameplay does not look nearly terrible. as well. Yeah. Yeah, this this is definitely something that's more meant for mobile that came across to a PC port. Yeah. That's... I was impressed with that it does actually have quite an extensive um uh word. They have they have, they do have quite an extensive progression system, mm. which was uh which is pretty neat, and a lot of different mechanical. Because, yeah, the base game is very simple, but there's a lot of these different mechanical elements about, like, when do you uh, when do you launch, when do you, like, fire off the rocket, what time is the best for that. So it's just like, you know what? Uh, I could see myself playing this, this one. Uh, I like their little image uh, further down on their description for the in-depth physics on there. That, in-depth that, physics. That, that just made my day. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. They know the memes, um, but yeah, I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing a lot of uh, eight to ten hour kind of thing as far as the amount of time, and it does have generally positive reviews. It's so. seven pound nineteen. 
Mm-hmm. 9.99. Yep. US. So yeah, and that's by Odd Time to Studios. I believe it is their first game as well. Nope, it's not. They made um uh the mod aperture tag. Oh, oh, that's like a portal mod. The paint gun, the paint gun testing initiative. Um, and they made a VR title. So it's their first non-VR, non-mod title. Okay. All right. Uh, our next title, we're down to Wednesday, September 25th, just breezing on through. Uh, our next title is Timothy and the Mysterious Forest. Timothy and the Mysterious Forest is a mix of old-school Game Boy graphics, meta-narrative, stealth system, and action combat with a high-difficulty level. Elements from adventure exploration games are mixed with puzzle and stealth. Exploration, reading, and keeping a slow pace is the best tactic. Hey, Buffoon Batman. Welcome on in. Oh, and this is definitely retro. (laughs) (laughs) This is, uh, I'm just getting right up like, yeah, the game, the old good old Game Boy RPG look. It's nice. They capture that perfectly. Yeah, kind of a mix of uh, Legend of Zelda meets, uh, what was it? The Super Mario Land 2, the or the one where Wario was the, the main boss, is kind of what I'm getting uh, graphically-wise. It looks so adorable. <laughs> it does. Uh, definitely definitely going for that Zelda action combat uh, as mm. well, so that's, that's kind of cool. I'm terrible at that, just because it is very, uh, it's a very restrictive medium. I'm used mm. to more freeform, but you know it's going for the retro, and uh, it, it's doing that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's really cute, um, and I like the unique assets because even though it was they were able to uh, make their own art, but still make it so fit so perfectly in Nintendo's aesthetic. So very impressed. This is by Kibo Entertainment that has also uh, from Pavia, Italy. That has also made uh, quite a few other. Uh, oh no! It takes me to Gamera, Gamera Interactive. I know Kibo oh, okay. has made some others, but it's. I would have to go search for Kibo. Let me see. But yeah, um, it is nine ninety nine, and it's um, seven pound nineteen here. Um, and yeah, there's there's not many reviews up right now, but. Um... Mm. Uh, the ones that are up are positive. Okay, yeah, but yeah, it's a. Blood, they also made Blood Opera Crescendo and uh, the some of the. They made music. Oh yeah, I guess they made music DLC. Hmm. Interesting. Something that that's, uh, Justin. Justin enjoys. <laughs> yes, yes. Things for Justin. Our next title is Home Sweet Home Episode Two. Uh, do do. There we go. Terror and mystery meet in home sweet home sweet home. What? Home sweet home sweet home episode two. The sequel to last year's cult hit first person horror game, Home Sweet Home. Immerse yourself in a world where evil hides behind every corner and a world inspired by uh, Thai folklore and mythology. Yep. So this is by um, Yggdrasil Group, which is a uh, company located in Bangkok, Thailand. They also do video graphics, and they do like a bunch of other stuff. But yeah, they're based out of Bangkok. And so it was a little weird, because they're filing for their uh, developer. It's a different name, so this is Yggdrasil Group Public Co., and the previous one was made by Yggdrasil Mm -hmm. Group Co. Limited. So... (laughs) <laughs> so, yeah, something, something a bit weird going on. Yeah, a little bit weird. Tax, so it's a little hard to find the problem. first one. But mm. yeah, the first one was also out, and this one's also doing mostly positive review review wise. I don't say uh, like a Thai I, Thai based horror is kind of neat. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's I, I I guess I've never ran into like the mythology or kind kind of like their their horror elements or anything like that. So that that actually has me really intrigued to jump into this because I don't know what I would expect. Yeah, it looks uh, yeah. super interesting, and um, I just I I can't I kind of want to watch someone play this mm. to see what the the story is about because it's always interesting to see how. Um, different cultures 
you know, interpret Ooh. horror and everything. So yeah, I'm I'm very curious. So an interesting thing to jump in here. The first part of the game is out now. The second half is going to release as a free update on Halloween. So it's mm. not completely out yet. Yeah. And this part of the game is about six hours. Apparently, the previous one is a bit shorter than that. So, uh, but yeah. So that's interesting that they're waiting for Halloween to. So you can play it now, get to a certain point, and then play it again at Halloween. Hmm. Interesting. So set, set your time is then, I guess, and uh, if or put put this on your your wish list, and then you know get ready for, to do a broadcast on Halloween of this game. It look it looks it looks really. Well done. Yeah. And um, just like with Japanese horror and, uh, well, there's that Taiwanese horror as well. Mm. There's often like these very interesting things that just get pulled from their local history and stuff. They're just like, oh, that's really unsettling. Because even though it's like you have no cultural context and it's probably a little more unsettling for them. Like you're mm. still, it's just something you've never thought of before. And it's like, oh, uh. Mm. <laughs> It's just very neat. I love that about uh, that is one thing I do like about horror, even though I'm a chicken. So, <laughs> so that can be very different. Um, this this is uh, sixteen ninety nine. Yep, so. uh, eighteen ninety nine US. So, uh, our next title is Mindustry, an open ended tower defense game with a focus on resource management. This is created by Anuk and Dev, which I've not been able to find much information on at all. <laughs> uh, so they don't they don't seem to have a social media presence or anything, but um, it seems to be one of those sort of like top down. Is it factory factory uh, simulator? Fact uh, mm. so, uh, well, it's a tower defense game with resource management. So it's got that uh, mm. factorio vibe, but a much more colorful version with the top down. I'm trying to figure this all out. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, I, I guess it's like, um, well, I suppose we, you know, there's those kind of games like uh, Warcraft or Starcraft, and you, you've mm -hmm. got to get your your um, peons to collect resources so then you can make weapons or um, or soldiers. I suppose it's like that, except this is all automated. You you've got to make your own little factory sort of thing mm -hmm. um, to stop enemies. So I guess it's kind of like that. Yeah, my brother, my brother would be really into uh, something like this because he he likes these more like so grid based uh, creating systems where you create a system to basically keep things running and working. Mm -hmm. Not really yeah. my cup of tea, but it's uh, it's interesting and it's got a uh, you know it's got uh, it's got a good color palette and it's got uh, you know I like how they smooth the edges just a little bit even with it being um, on a grid. Yeah, this is um, it's a very positive review so far. So, um, 451 positive reviews, so 96%. And it's £4.79. Yeah. Which for a game like this, you're probably going to get many hours out of it. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. that's a steal. 5.99 US. Uh, whoops. I do not want to copy the entirety of the notes. Yeah, you do. There we go. No, I don't. I know. All right. So our next title is from Friday, September twenty seventh. We're we're almost done with the first week, guys. Um, uh, it is heist, which if I can find it, or you know, all in caps, heist. If uh, that is not right. <laughs> ah, thank you. Uh, uh, oh, there it is. I finally. It? It's uh, it's on second page if you search. Mm, this is mm, yeah. you, They need to not use a common word. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, it is definitely buried. Heist is a noir cat burglar game where you step into the shoes of a cat burglar in the pursuit of infamy. Aided by your array of trusty tools of the trade, your goal is simple. Get in, get it, get out. I love, I love the style of this. Mm -hmm. oh. um, Film noir is perfect. Yeah. I love it. This looks really good. If only they went with a different name. Yeah. 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 Because I definitely feel like that is what buried them. Is with, do not go with a single word name, especially if that word has been used in so many other titles. Just 
just don't do it <laughs> it's a bad idea but uh but yeah heist um uh the sort of film noir style is really nice and uh of course uh you have to make a lot of choices like they have all these videos showing you how to use the different devices which is a neat is a neat thing to have on your page but you can only have three of those devices when you go out so whenever you're approaching like um a heist you may go into it with a certain set and then realize that like oh i really need to come in here with a different kit so it's, it kind of has that sort of like a retry if it doesn't work out was one way maybe it'd work out another way that's kind of cool yeah that's cool um it's 1449 uh 1899 us yep i like that it's got three non-lethal gadgets so, mm-hmm. is it so? Is this um, more encouraging you to not to not just whack someone over the head? Well, <laughs> yeah, I think with a, with a, with a burglar, like uh, you want to leave as little evidence as possible, and a body's kind of hard to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I feel like general general, you're just trying to get in and get out, and not get worse felonies put piled on your head. So true, true. All right. Uh, our next title is Bucket Knight. Does this have any connection to the Colonel Sanders game? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm sorry. Even knights still have to pay taxes, loans, and alimony. Yeah, so it, it might still be connected. Uh, help the brave knight in his sacred mission to find the Holy Grail and then sell it. Explore dungeons, slay enemies, avoid traps, stay alive, and get rich. Uh, I like the cynicism. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that uh, is some excellent cynic comedy. And I can't tell if they just did this for, like, the thumbnails of the game or if it really has that old, like, tube CRT look to it. Yeah, I was thinking that. Yeah. It's... That is one thing I'm not too hot about. If, um, if it does actually do that, I'm just like, oh, man, no, I just want it to be on my screen proper, like, please... But I don't know. So, so something about that old vibe. I'm I, I'm actually kind of I'm, mm-hmm. I'm kind of jiving with it myself. Yeah, I get what they're doing, but generally I'm just like, oh, just flat screen, please. I don't know. I feel a little like pandered to, and that's just with it's like, uh, yes, I get it. It's old school. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a it's a way that people haven't come after like old school style games in a long time. Hmm. Mm. Hey, at least it's not uh, like four three ratio. True. Yeah. Oof. True. We'd Oof. have a problem. That would be that would be a problem. Four three ratio. Man. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Bucket Knight. It's it looks super cute. I like it a lot. Yeah. I. It, yeah. It, it looks really fun and um, and it's only three ninety nine. Yeah. Well. Four ninety nine US and is by Dev Pigeon from England. Uh, Pigeon Dev. Pigeon yeah, Dev. Dev. Yeah. Uh, his uh, his at Dev underscore Pigeon on uh, Twitter. Ah. Yeah, oh, gotcha. Because yeah, yeah. So yeah no, the, uh, their yeah, developer Dev. publisher is just Pigeon yeah, Dev. Pigeon so it's Dev, like, yeah. oh no, I want to make sure it goes to the right one and not not you know his evil twin brother that has a goatee. Oh yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, our uh, next title is from German developer Ilias uh, Nordlicht. Uh, licked what? Uh, is an adventure <laughs> game where you accompany an unusual family on its fascinating journey to the cold north. During the journey, they encounter mysterious star signs of the polar night and have to overcome nature's dangers to confront their fears. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks like a sort of very classical point-and-click game with a neat sort of paper cutout aesthetic. And there's a guinea pig. Yes. The guinea pig's adorable. Yeah. So this is <laughs> this is a wish list item for uh, Rody. Yes, yes. Oh, some big mouse. It does have oh, really good art style. Like the, I was really impressed by this. Uh, let me oh. see. There, there was a few times seeing uh, our what looks like our female lead who was just kind of like staring like dead on oh, camera. Dead that was kind of creeping creeping me out just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, like everything else, this looks really cute. Mm. Yes, let me see. Um, and of course, they don't have their own page, unfortunately. Just takes you to their publishers. But yeah, Ilias. Um, I do think this 
Uh, from looking at the Twitter, if I remember properly, I think this is their first title they've released as a studio. So, but yeah, Nordlicht. Um, uh, so it's um, it's it's quite short, short experience. Some uh, people are saying it's like two to three, two to three hours. Mm-hmm. Um, another um, criticism, some someone I I see pop up is that some unclear gameplay elements. Mm. So I wonder if it's moon logic or just doesn't explain it well. Yeah, and also for some people, the boat mini games as well as a con. They they don't they don't Uh, mm. like that. So gotcha. Mm. So it is four ninety nine US, but you can get it as part of a bundle with three other games for ten forty six at fifty percent off US. Nice. Yeah. Mm. Okay. But yeah, um, yeah. So that's that's three ninety nine the single game here. Yeah, yeah, I I mean this uh this is going on my wish list. Um, it'd be I think it'd be interesting to see how well done the story is. Um, because a, a lot of um indie point and click games is like they start off really well. It seems that's where all the money goes like right at the start mm-hmm. and then at the end it's sort of like they don't know how to end it properly or something or it just kind of mm. ends quite abruptly or something so yeah mm-hmm. it'd be be interesting to to see how well this one is yeah this is done. and with it only being two to three hours hopefully that they're able to maintain that sort of pacing throughout Oh, you'd be surprised even with two <laughs> three hours they still still the endings aren't, aren't done very well hmm. all right uh our next title is angelo and demon one hell of a quest once upon a time the grim reaper chose the wrong door angelo a young lazy bumaholic oh sorry a blogger powered only by his blogging skills must turn on point and click adventure mode go around the entire inferno meet the locals and somehow get back home Enjoy hell. We made it just for you. <laughs> I'm. I. I already like the art style to this. Um, yeah. I and even the description. I like the humor. Um, I'm. I'm not as big into point and click as someone we all know and love, but I. I actually kind of want to give this a shot. I. The problem that I. I have with the actual gameplay because what we're, we're seeing in the. Um, the cutscenes done very nicely, but when it actually see the gameplay, the animations aren't quite there. The it's mm-hmm. still a bit rough around the edges, I, I feel. Um, but yeah, it seems like a very interesting, interesting story. I, I, I mean, this is obviously going on my wish list. Um, but I have heard some criticism about this game that um, the dialogue because it's not english isn't their native language it's Uh not it it, you know it's not quite accurate so Mm, that's wrong yeah this is by special bit from ukraine so oh that's 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 unfortunate i have played one of their other games oh um, really yeah the the last stream the developers edition so i have i have played that which was a hidden object game which had Mm. fmv elements in it and it was um oh okay it was i I, we i we talked about it on here and it was just like there were parts of it that just didn't make sense at Mm -hmm. all like um because he I wasn't sure whether he was having a waking dream, like he was just being transported to another place, or if it only happened when he fell asleep. It wasn't very clear in certain parts of the game. And it was just like, um, I felt like they hadn't really thought about how they were going to do things properly. They didn't like, okay, they didn't sit down and say, okay, this is how this is going to go and how we're going to visualize that. I, and I'm worried that they might mm-hmm. they may have done it on this game, but you know, we'll see. We'll see what the puzzles are like. And yeah, and at, at the price point, with some of the issues, at least as far as that's concerned, I, yeah, I, I, started, I started real high on this game, and now I'm starting to go no. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, because especially a game that's all about like trying to help you solve a puzzle or you know understand jokes. Even if it's not well translated, that could be um, difficult to deal with. I do like the just sort of satirical thing that like Death was just using an app on his phone. And it's like oh, Room Six. <laughs> and then, like the whole thing <laughs> is just a mistake. Uh, yeah. I like that a lot. That is really funny. Um, yeah. It is thirteen pound forty nine. So, and I don't. I'm not sure how long it is. I'm seeing, like most people are under um, five hours. Mm -hmm. Five hours under, under five and a half hours. Mm -hmm. it does have Which ninety percent positive, but it is a uh, yeah sixteen ninety nine. So if it's about five and a half hours, it's a little on the short side. Mm, yeah, but yeah. All right. Um, our next title into our second week is Monday, September 30th, and it is Third Eye. A 2D exploration horror game starring the Toho Project's Koshi Komishi. Uh, use her third eye to explore a mental world entirely unlike reality. Yep. So this is sort of, uh, I think it's kind of a horror point and click, uh, or at least a horror theme type of point and click that they've got going here strong couple of weeks for point and click games yeah no mm. kidding so but yeah a lot of sort of unsettling like uh because you enter in like the world and the world underneath the world uh situation so that like you kind of have to shift between the two realities a bit um and that's part of it and there's just really unsettling imagery which is quite funny yeah, I'm seeing a lot of Toho meets Tim Burton. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm seeing Tim Burton a lot in the reviews right now, and that that's kind of the. I, I got a little bit of oh uh, the the Broken Age art style, but mm -hmm. if Broken Age was done by Tim Burton instead of uh, Tim Schafer, yeah, <laughs> it's um, I I want to know a bit more about about the story and yeah. um. It says that a girl who reads the thoughts of others, fearing her third eye, she spent most of her life alone, locked up in her room. She's a living being and must have had parents, but they are nowhere to be seen. Her sister has left her all alone. What could she be up to? One night, however, um, Koshi wakes up in an unfamiliar room and her life is changed forever. Uh, so, um, so, yeah, I think it's could be interesting and but again it depends on how well the story is done and of, of course you know how well the puzzles are done as well mm -hmm. but this is 11 pound 39 yeah um I, I'm, I've, I've put it on my wish list yeah. um i want to um i want to see how how long it is i've not seen anything longer than uh. three and a half hours mm. really it's got 92% positive, and it looks to be uh, $14.99 US. So, yep. Alrighty, and it is, of course, developed by Third Eye Project, so it looks like they made the team for this. Uh, next title is Spaceland. There we go. And they do have Incredibly an OST. Oops, Sorry. it does have an OST. Oh, man, just, it, Justin's Game of the Week right here. <laughs> uh, incredibly dynamic turn-based strategy reviving the traditions of the old school tactics lead a team of the most desperate fighters destroy alien monsters and uncover the secrets of the lost planet yeah so it's uh it seems to be really kind of um a more stripped down type of turn-based rpg uh where it's got this really good, cool grid base this that aesthetic that has a sort of soft like almost pastel look to it which i quite like um but it's uh you just have three characters like there's basically three characters that you get in your party maybe there's more but they only really advertise three characters you get you get the engineer the run gunner and the and the soldier veteran guy the the scout and the soldier veteran guy um i just yeah. like it's a cool simple system and i like that and I, I'm, I'm looking back at one of their previous games, uh, Brave Land instead of uh, Space Land. I'm looking at the art style of that versus where they are now. Oh my goodness, they took a big old step up. Oh, like, yeah. th 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 this, oh, wow. 
Yeah. I, I, I am so impressed with like how how much they stepped up their game on that. Like, and, and don't get me wrong, the, their Brave Land looks absolutely adorable still. Like, I, I mm-hmm. like that art style and uh, what have you. But just going from that over to this, like, I, I really like how this looks. Mm-hmm. Oh, it just looks so nice. Like, Tortuga team, mm. they've done a lot of turn based RPGs, but this is the first one that, first of all, it's not like a. In this one, they kind of move from stage to stage, while the other one is like you have an overworld and then you have stages, whereas this one, you're kind of exploring from one part of the map to another kind of thing. So it's 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 a bit more continuous. Uh, and yeah. I've, I've played all their other games. Really? Yes. Really? You've played all <laughs> yes. of them? All of them. All right, so I... you know, what, what you got, Ms. Rody? I'm assuming you must like them a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I didn't realize. I, I, I went to say, oh, let me check what other games I got. Now I say, oh yeah, I've I've played all their other games. Um, so yeah, it's um, their other games are on. I played it on mobile. Mm-hmm. They're all they're all mobile games. Um, and they're you know, nice. There's a nice little story going on, although you know, it's not too in depth, and um, it's um interesting um like sort of uh hero progression and you've got your your little units as well that you pick up um along the way as the story progresses which is uh really nice um so i'm wondering and and that's for all their other games Mm -hmm. so i'm wondering if the same sort of system is in place here or if you only have those three characters um which would be very yeah, it'd be very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and and all you, and your upgrades are really you know your weapons and your your armor and like that. So yeah, I I'm but I'm looking at this this game and it's it's like yeah it's so so well done and mm-hmm. yeah, so I'm, far this is the first game um, on the show that I think I'm adding to my wish list. So I just I just need to check it out. I like turn based RPGs, and this one just seems to have like the 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 aesthetic and the and you know the history. The the these devs have a history of being able to make a turn turn based games, and I'm like, oh, you know what? I gotta yeah. give Tortuga Team a chance. So yeah, yeah, their games like don't really you don't feel bogged down too much. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's it's like you just wanna play through a nice little story or something like that or and just have fun with the tactics and everything with but without it being too overwhelming i feel so yeah it's great oh okay there's seven different um space rangers but they don't talk about the other four in the trailer okay all right, all right interesting so those are probably your starting three and then you can get four more over the course of the game all righty um so yeah, that is Spaceland, uh, and yeah, it's thirteen forty nine US, uh, twelve fifty nine uh, UK. And it's ten percent off right now, um, and it's I've seen uh, all different hours played on it from um, like five hours to fifteen hours, or even longer. I suppose some some replayed it or something. So yeah, some. I'm, I couldn't. I don't know if it's uh, maybe enough hours for you. I mm-hmm. I don't know. Depending on if you play it or not, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Well, our next title is Nobodies by Blitz uh, or Blitz. Uh, let me see. Uh, Blitz, Blitz, something yeah, like that. In uh, Argentina. Nope. Yeah. Uh, Nobody's is a puzzle-filled point-and-click adventure. Another another point-and-click uh, in mm-hmm. which you must cover up government-sanctioned assassins, hide the bodies, destroy the evidence, and leave no trace. You were ever there. They do the dirty work. You clean it up. It's it's a clever idea. Um, I I saw this. I saw this like set up for a sort of. Um, like a point and click kind of uh like almost like a room this is also kind of has elements of that sort of uh object finding games we just uh, yeah, trying yeah. to remove evidence it's like that is such a clever way to do that to make it a bit more immersive so you're not yeah, just um, looking for random things 
So I've played their previous game. Their previous game was a Kickstarter that I backed. Um, uh, what, what is it? The, uh, Kevin and machine. the Infamous Machine. Yeah. So I, I played I played that, and um, anyway, it was fairly good. It was fairly good. A lot, lot of humor in in that. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's um, the route they're going uh, this time, but mm -hmm. it's. Um, it is definitely an interesting concept and i and i've put it on my my wish list but yeah you you're right that this is a lot more sort of hidden object kind of game um where it's got those kind of those kind of puzzles in it rather than actually you know you're picking you're picking up things and rubbing them together and and trying to mm -hmm. unlock doors and stuff so yeah i'm i'm quite uh curious to see how this is and it's and it's really cheap. It's only um, ten cents off right now, um, and it's five uh, thirty nine. Yep, and six twenty nine US. It's only got four reviews, uh, but they are well. They've got more than four, but um, but yeah, they're all positive. They have all positive yeah. reviews right now. Yeah, this is definitely going on my wish list. It, it, it's one of those. I'm I'm not I'm not the point and click uh, <laughs> kind of sewer. But this looks good. The theme is just so well done. Like it's it's a cool theme. It's really neat. Um, yeah, because I really like the art style. Yeah, sorry, Tom. The, no, no, no. You're 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 fine. The the art from the outside, like the thumbnail and all that. I was actually expecting a horror game out of this. Mm. Uh, and then like looking through at some of it, like with the wood chipper and like the 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 one uh, scene that they're showing. I, I I was legit expecting a horror game out of mm. this. And not a uh, you're cleaning up after assassins. Now, granted, uh, dead bodies and all that you could consider it a horror in a mm -hmm. in a sense. But um, yeah, the the more I started looking into this, the more the the, the only thing that looks really different is once you get, uh, like there was like uh, one puzzle that I'm seeing like where you're moving uh, cars around. And I was just yeah. like the, the 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 top down view and the the art style like kind of shifted in that and, and mm -hmm. it kind of took me out of the rest of it. And if that's my only complaint thus far, that's not bad. Yeah. 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 I'm 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 probably gonna get this pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The um yeah because I'm seeing my um like six six hours. Six to six to ten hours gameplay on this, so yeah, I think that's I think that's worth it. Yep. All right, um, our next title from Wednesday, October second, uh, by Max Nielsen is "The Long Return." And there are words. There they are. A beautiful third-person puzzle adventure game telling the story of an orphan cub that retraces his steps from the last journey he took with his mother. Along the way, you'll be challenged by fun and unique puzzles, explore amazing scenery full of life, and relive past memories of your mother. This is going to be a sad game, isn't it? Yep. Mm. Uh, the low-poly art style, I feel like they've done it successfully here. Um, yeah. And it's a really cheap way to get away cheap when you're um, just one person, but uh, kudos mm -hmm. on getting the aesthetic down. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, it looks or... good. It doesn't look cheap, even though, like, yeah. yes, this is a this is a cheap way to do art. So it's good. Good job. Yeah, so it's it looks quite beautiful. Mm. Also, there's just like a lot of these little extra details in the background, which is really nice. Quite like that. Um, there do seem to be sort of these weird like puzzle things though. So you have like the outer world and you've got these sort of like puzzles that go on here. So that seems like an odd mm. mini game to throw in. Yeah. yeah. They, they, it's it just looked like they, they took like a narrative idea that they had and a oh look, I have a puzzle game. Let's just mix the two together and see what happened. Like it feels yeah. like they should have been a little more separated. I feel like this mm. could stand on its own just as a 3D platformer. Yeah. Or, you know, 3D puzzle platformer even. Like I don't think it needs the mini game. Um, yeah, so, um someone said jumping, it seems a little sticky at times. Um and the, someone else is 
as I said, the same platform needs to be tuned a bit. Movements are okay, but jumps need to be more power. You always feel like you're going to miss the next rock platform. Since mm. the game is not really about platforming, this can get sometimes annoying. Mm. Okay, interesting. Well, it does have a 100% in the reviews at the moment. Uh, and I do believe this is Max. Yeah, this is Max's first title. So congratulations, yeah. Max. Yeah. Uh, it looks great. <laughs> I really like the animation on the cub, too. Like, it's uh, it's well animated. Yeah, it's uh, $8.99 US with 10% off. Yes, and uh, 10% off. So it's £6.47. Yep. And uh, and now we go to Thursday, October 3rd. Our next title is Neo Cab by Chance Agency from San Francisco, California. Uh, play as Lena, the last human driver for hire, searching for her missing friend in the neon streets of Los Ojos. In this interactive story, you'll meet unique passengers during your nightly shifts, each with their own clues and secrets, and get them to share. So... Taxi Cab Confessionals, the game. Mm. Yeah. This is this has been on my radar for a while. Um, um, it's because it, it's got that great sort of kind of narrative kind of uh, kind of games that I, I like. You know, you, you talk, you're basically talking to NPCs and finding out, you know what their deal is and everything and you're getting information so yeah i it it's right up my street yeah mm -hmm. yeah and it's sort of like setting this sort of you know the 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 techno uh techno punk no cyber sort of a cyberpunk setting um mm. that which may or may not be dystopic <laughs> mm. so but it's a it's a cool uh it's a very neat thing that they have set up so yeah it it, it looks it hmm i'm i'm at a loss for how i think it looks at times because it, it it reminds me of a few of those adverts uh like that you'll see in the banners of like oh come check out this game and then it looks absolutely nothing like that whatsoever mm -hmm. um if, you, if you're ever dumb enough like me to follow those links. Um, but this looks interesting. Mm -hmm. huh. And I, I'm awkwardly on the fence about this. Huh. It uh, kind of reminds me of Subsurface Circular. Because huh. you, cause you, you know, you, you've got... You're, you're on public transport, you're traveling, you're on transport, and you have to speak to the NPCs and so that that's the core of the game so yeah it reminds me it reminds me of that Ooh, they have a discord channel too no oh, okay neat but there's there's a demo as well so you know if you hey. mm, so if you're on the fence about it maybe give it give it a, a go and, and see see what you how you feel see how you feel about it but it's twenty percent off right now, and it's uh, nine pound eleven. Uh, it's normally fourteen ninety nine, but it's twenty percent off eleven ninety nine. But you can also pick up the OST. In this game. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm seeing like maximum around like five hours, so it doesn't seem like a very long game. Yeah, it's probably it's probably one of those games that one or two sittings, but uh, probably two sittings. <laughs> but mm. yeah, uh, Chance Agency. Uh, it does have a free demo though, so I do yeah. I do appreciate that. Mm. All right, uh, our next title is Arkan the Dog Adventurer. Arkan the Dog Adventurer. I feel, I feel like I have to be quiet with that because they didn't capitalize the Dog Adventurer. Yeah, the Dog uh, Adventurer. <laughs> a a unique welcome. explosive mixture of platformer and Arkanoid. Hit the ball, move around, jump, smash the bricks, destroy the enemies, destroy everything, destroyable. Yep. So it's almost like a horizontal brick breaker game, I guess. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Hmm. There's some parts of this that look really good, and then other parts it's like, no. Mm, yeah, uh, something no. something about the art style uh, is a little inconsistent. Um, I think the blocks don't look like they fit. No. Um, it, it's nice they stick out from the background, like, and they, they are distinct from mm-hmm. each other, too. So if they have different properties, that's kind of a plus side. But, mm-hmm. mm. Mechanically, though, this does look really cool. Mm. And it's a doggo. Yeah, it's a dog. But <laughs> yeah, this is by Madao Studio. Um, I don't believe they've done... Yeah, this is their first title on Steam. It's uh, and the pixel art. So the where the pixel art is good, it is very, very good. And where it's not, it's just kind of eh. So that's the that's the main thing. Like there's some very there's very good ones. Also, um, I wonder if there's any sort of. They did show sort of like you can make your own level to oh, a degree. Yeah. Oh yeah, there is a level editor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, although the con, some, someone said that one of the cons is uh, no workshop for user cr- users created mm. levels. Oh, so you can't share them. Mm. Mm. That would be that would be a good thing to add. Uh, and another person has said that it, it is the game's just way too difficult. So um, mm. I mean, thing is, if you if you like difficult games or that this is for you it does it does say in one of the tags but mm. you know for, yeah, for some yeah for something that looks like this kind of cute i would would have hoped that you know there would have been like an an easy mode or something that people can jump in on no oh, it does it does definitely have that more light-hearted cute look it's like ah mm. this game this game's really difficult guys <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah um, yeah, and it's uh, eight forty nine with fifteen percent off US. Yes, uh, it's six pound eleven. Yep. All right, on to our last day is Friday, October fourth. We have the sword and the slime. I, I like this name already. <laughs> uh, the sword and the slime is a unique take on the two D puzzle platformer where you play as a flying sword and find an unlikely ally in a slime using only the mouse. Protect and guide your companion through a dangerous dungeon full of nasty monsters and cruel traps. I like how slime just goes around and just dissolves people. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just doing what slime does. And for some reason, it's just your friend as the magical sword. I, I, this is really clever. I quite like this. And Oh, and I guess you, you are the fairy that's guiding the sword. Interesting. Oh, so you you end up guiding them both from the looks of it. Oh yeah. How whimsical. What I, I wonder wonder I do wonder what it takes to come up with this idea. <laughs> uh, a lot of drugs. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, it's a it's a neat concept. Oh, and it seems that there's also a mechanic with like as you eat people, you get bigger. And so you may need to you you need to be oh, need yeah. to be a certain size in order to uh, like weigh down something or move something that sort of stuff. Interesting. Oh, very clever. Oh no, the poor slime can die too. It's it's very beautiful. Like the pixel art is fantastic. It's a unique aesthetic. Um without you know being particularly like complicated like they do go for solid colors a lot i see but mm. it's uh it fits with the aesthetic i like it sword in the slime this is my possum house games from rochester new york and this is their first title yeah and i'm seeing it's about an hour hour long is mm. uh Ooh, only an hour yeah that's mm. it, that's consistently what i'm seeing down below okay so it's four ninety nine. So maybe like, mm, I don't know. It might it might be worth checking out just because it is such a unique idea. But yeah, yeah oh, five dollars. Yes, mm. three ninety nine. But yeah, yeah. If it's an hour, it's. Mm. It is very pretty though. Yeah. It's pretty. The it's a really unique thought, and it, it's one of those I would almost want to support the four ninety nine to see if they would take 
this idea and put more to it. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I'll, I'll almost make like a bigger version of this game if there was enough support behind this one. Um, cause yeah, because it's it's I a really cool, unique like ideas, it. and I want to see more ideas like this. Yeah. So it's a good idea. All right, so basically, uh, I guess they need to take more drugs, maybe? I don't know. Um, <laughs> all right, so our next title is uh, Reign of Reflections, Chapter 1. Reign of Reflections is an atmospheric dystopian adventure game with exploration and deep character interactions. Certain based strategic confrontations are uniquely centered around a motiv- motivation mechanic. Motivation mechanic. I don't entirely know what that means. I, but yeah, I'm with you on that. So it really depends on what what they mean by that. I do like the world. the The world has a cool look to it. Um, this is, I guess, sort of an XCOM type game, but with a lot of storyline. Um, but yeah, that is uh, it's it's really neat. I like I like just the overall look. It's cool. It's by Lion Bite Games out of Stockholm, Sweden. I'm just watching the trailer right now. It's it's yeah. uh huh. The the only thing I don't like is how everything has that wet sheen to it. Like, oh, and yeah. I'm granted it's like raining in most of it, mm-hmm. and, but it's I don't know. It, not it, th- things where everything has to be uh, a, a little damp or wet. I don't know. It, it just bugs me a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's like ah, uh, because it it doesn't exactly look real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's like the the rain she shine. It, it looks more oily than it looks wet. So I don't yeah. think I don't think computers have quite gotten that yet. Yeah. So yeah, someday, someday, hopefully. But for now, whenever I think see things that are wet, it's like and it's a nice touch that you did that, but it doesn't look real. And then, I mean, when it's called rain of reflections, I guess everything <laughs> needs to be wet. Yep, <laughs> everything absolutely soaked. Uh, um, yeah, it's uh, it the what well, someone said the entire game takes two to three hours to complete, mm. so it's uh, it's not not big, no, no. Um, and this is only but this is only chapter one, so I don't know, I'm not sure how many chapters, chapters they're gonna bring yeah. out, yeah, true. And will the uh, additional chapters be? Uh, will they just be added to it, or will you have to buy those separately? Mm. Or will there be sort of a pack? I don't know. Um, we'll have to wait and see when the next chapter comes out, probably. Because I don't see yeah, anything. It's, it's 10% off right now, and it's £13. Yeah, seventeen oh nine US, which for three hours, two to three hours, eh, that's kind of steep. It's pretty mm. steep. Yeah. But from how it looks and everything... Eh, and- if if the other mm. chapters are included in that price, yeah, if they I'm, are, I'm going to be a little bit more. Uh, I'll leave. This is okay, especially mm. for how it looks. Uh, the gameplay looks good. Uh, if, if you're into the XCOM style uh, system, uh, but yeah, as long as long as the other chapters are included, if you have mm. to buy them separate, then that's going to be a hard pass. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I d- I definitely want to see chapter. Uh... Uh, I definitely want to see how soon Chapter 2 comes out. Mm. Uh, and yeah, and how it's monetized. But yeah, so that is uh, Reign of Reflections. Um, all right, let me see. Uh, do 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 Yeah, so with that, that's we're done with the release list. That is all yeah. of them. Yay! Yay! Now, <laughs> before we get, talk about what our best of the list was, um, no, no, Brody has no. a delightful section yes. for us. We we need to remove this section whenever uh, I'm on. No, <laughs> no, you have too much Ooh. faith in game development. We need we need to ruin it. But this is uh these these are some of the choice games that released this last uh this last couple weeks. Choice as in. Ugh, really, <laughs> really weird. But I'm looking forward to. What are they? Okay, well, you know, dive straight in with this the uh, first one called Mmm Donuts. Ah. Okay, mm, you're, you're donuts. luring me in with food. Yeah. All right. Oh no! Simple puzzle game. 
The goal, help yellow circle get to sweet. <laughs> and it's, oh. uh, it, the developer is called Easy Game, and the publisher, Game for People, as opposed to, you know, Game for Cats. I mean, I've seen enough cats swipe at tablets, you can make a game for cats. What the heck is this? Uh, and the re the one review that I see is um, the fun is here. Good game, but where is the button to exit the game? I'll never let you leave. Once you're in this oh. game, that's it. <laughs> um, they've made quite a few games, including one of my uh, personal fa favorites. Oh, you touch my balls. <laughs> what? <gasps> oh my god. Yep. That wow. here. That is a real game. Yep. Okay, I'm not going to click it because we're on stream. <laughs> uh, it is 100% clean. 100% clean, okay. 100 still not going to click it. That's yeah, fair. The, the ball just goes in, the like bouncy ball just goes into a glass. Oh, how very, how very cheeky of them. Anyhow. There is press F to but, pay respects. But yeah, they're all like 79p. Like all the, all the games, which is it's like it's like a yeah. game development sweatshop or some sort. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what? Uh, yeah. So so guys, I, I I have to come out and tell you something. I I'm secretly easy game. Easy game. Oh, <laughs> you're secretly easy game. Oh, it's your fault. Of course. Yeah. <sighs> How could you, Tom? How could you? How could you? Mm, donuts are. <laughs> oh my word okay um let's go on to the next one this one's just like they're just trying to use the it's marketing that's what this is it's marketing for something that's nothing to do with it really okay so um so you know it it's spoopy spoopy month so mm -hmm. the next oh, game no. that i that i went with the ancient, ancient all right at least this has an, a name oh no oh. All right, it took me into ukulele the impossible layer instead. Hmm. The ancient labyrinth is a survival horror game inspired by games like Alien Isolation. Set in ancient Egypt, your aim will be to escape from a labyrinth by exploring the environment, solving puzzles, and above all, surviving a dangerous creature that will hunt you for the entire duration of the game. Hmm. It just looks, you know, we the ones that we we featured the the horror games that we featured, you know, that's a good way to do the horror games. Whereas this just is just, you know, man. I feel I almost feel like um, many years back this might actually be a a marketable game. Um, just yeah. like aesthetically, it doesn't have too far to go. No. Um, but yeah, it just it's still in that Duker realm. Like you know, it could be. I don't know mechanically how well it is, but if the puzzles are clever, I don't hate it. I don't hate. It. I'm just saying I don't hate this game. But it's yeah, uh, I, I love Egyptian settings. Like I, I love ancient Egypt. I'm, it's just I'm, I'm, the I'm, art needs work. Well, also I think um, the problem with this game mainly is when you see what's chasing you. Oh, if yeah. that doesn't hold any fear for you, then it completely takes you out of the immersion of the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that can be a problem when you show what is chasing you. In in oh. Alien Isolation, that you you already you have that fear, you mm -hmm. know, because the it looks horrific. You've seen the you know, hopefully you've seen mm -hmm. the movies, so you already have history with with that but this it just looks kind of it just looks kind of stupid yeah so, it does it's kind of a silly looking mummy thing so so yeah it is you know it doesn't really hold any horror for he he mm. kind of looks like if et got buff mm. yeah yeah basically yeah. all right well that's the ancient labyrinth it is 8.99 us um six pound 19 if you know that if, holds if, if it tickles your fancy <laughs> okay. Tickles my what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm still I'm still on the last game. Um, maybe you're into giant ET. 
Okay, uh, next title. Oh, 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 let me oh, no. bring bring this up. Um, <sighs> Brody, why are you doing this to me? I thought we were <laughs> friends. You know, it's oh, got a great name. Oh, oh, it, it's this is this is this is a a great one. This is this. There we go. Road Red Homeward Four. Last I'm sorry. Step. Uh, you you didn't say that right. Road Homeward Four. Last step. step. Oh, there's a lot of these. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. I I wonder if you have to play the the other three to you know fully appreciate what this is. Oh no. Road Homeward Four. They literally label it gameplay tra trailer. <laughs> is oh. an adventure in which you need to fly through forest, desert, etc. for the faulty helicopter to command in order to finish your path and safely go home. Wow. Well, you know what? Perseverance, like, four of these games? <laughs> Wait, voice support, voice acting of the main character, the transfer of his emotions. <laughs> Oh. Wow. So you control the helicopter. So it's the main character, the helicopter. Like, did am I? Are they the voice of the helicopter? And if they make Road Homeward Five, can I be the voice of the next helicopter? <laughs> yeah, you know, get get your voice credit. Get some voice acting credits. Oh yeah, I uh, I was the voice actor in Road Homeward Five. Main <laughs> voice actor. It's like, oh wow, wow, very cool. I think I would rather tell my family I was in a porn. <laughs> <laughs> it would be less embarrassing. <laughs> oh my oh god. All oh right. Gosh. Well, you know what? Again, well, this one I do really actually hate because it doesn't seem to work. Like, yeah. I really yeah. don't like this. Like the You would think they would learn after the first three. Probably didn't work. Exactly. Um and this and it's um it's 289 i i do i i do have i do have one more oh no one more okay what yeah. no no i agreed to three <laughs> <laughs> I, I we have time for one more so this is right, right it's it's called the hero but it's hero. it's because of the name it's on you'll find it on the third page wow okay and you have to listen to the voiceover. So do turn that up for our audience because it is something quite special. She says on the third page. Wow. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. Oh yeah, September twenty sixth. There was a boy whose name was John May. The boy became a young man and got married to a young lady with the name Rose. And one day, I'm not sure if uh, oh, if everyone's hearing it, but. <laughs> I'm, it's, it's, yeah. How long does the government leave the people of New York City capital? Oh, it sounds like they're just reading. The One day. Don't worry, you're safe now. Tell me what happened. Ooh. We had orders to go to the church. <laughs> you're safe now. Tell me what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but when we arrived, the ambush just. In order to go to the church, and they. <sighs> Ugh. Brody, why do you do this to me? I have to say, there's a lot of effort that went into this. This is yeah. a high effort game. Holy crap. Yeah? So much effort, yet. Do you like uh, <laughs> it's like, why'd you let. Just set it down at that. Voice acting. Ugh. Yeah. And you just fly out of that car or something. It's just, it's amazing. Um, I think this is a, I think this is an example of a potentially talented team who bit off way more than they can chew. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there is a lot of potential here. Eh? I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm seeing an upside somewhere. Oh, and I forgot to do my usual little reedy bit. It's an open world action adventure game. It takes place in two cities in two different ages with two different playable characters. The two, the two, the two. The first is New York, one word, USA, in an imaginary gloomy way. And the second story, London, United Kingdom, in 1802 at the Fraser campaign on Egypt. 
Right. It's weird because the bits that they'd shown of the of London, it didn't quite in in the in the trailer didn't quite look like it was eighteen oh two. Yeah. But... <sighs> Have a new experience in a different new indie game that tries to take you in the experience of the triple A games. Tries. Very and... clearly tries. And even <laughs> later on, they still don't know how to space out New York into, yeah. like, you know, two separate words. <sighs> wow. Um, this is £10.29. £10.29. £12.99 US. <sighs> it's ambitious. I'll give it that. It is very ambitious. Um, but, you know what? After this, these are these are the sort of games we we skip over. But you know what, the best of the worst. You know, sometimes like I'm like, you know what, ah, uh, uh, there's, there's like, there's a diamond in the rough. There's a this. diamond. Uh, I feel. Hey, I feel like. Hey, hey, Dark Space Studios, if you need voice acting, hi, <laughs> I will help you out. Yeah. Yeah. I I can I can read it's I, I can read it like they do in this for you. I, uh, Hero Two, Electric Boogaloo, mm -hmm. sign me up. <laughs> So, <laughs> back to back to better things. What uh, what 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 game was the top for each of you? Like uh, Radio Tom, what of the list that we had? What was your favorite? Uh, the one that I'm most intrigued by is Home Sweet Home Episode Two, uh, j j just because of the tie horror to it. Uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. the one that I'm likely to pick up is uh, Nobody's. J just because I, I mm -hmm. the more I saw it to it, I got along. Um, but the my, my standout of the day of just seeing where they started to where they are now is Spaceland. Oh, Spaceland, yeah. Space, Spaceland is just freaking gorgeous. Um, I, I'm not I'm not much of the turn based guy. That that's why I definitely talked about Nobodies and uh, the the home home sweet home episode two more than that, but. Just, just seeing their their games prior and then seeing that it was oh my goodness L look at what you've done oh i'm proud of you this is good so. yeah i'm yeah, in agreement i think spaceland was definitely my pick of the week and uh what about you roadie um i'm tom i yeah really like um nobody's it mm -hmm. is one i'd probably definitely pick up um and um I might pick up Angelo and the de the demon one hell of a quest. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. Level if it didn't have the language issues that we've been reading about, yeah. I'd be a little li little more inclined to joining you on that, but not at its price point with that kind of an issue. I I think um I, I definitely wait for that to come down. Uh, like I'll probably yeah. grab it in the sale, and I think I think it would depend on how bad it is you know you know because it, it might be just a few a couple of things that that are a bit crusty with mm -hmm. the yeah. the translation but otherwise it might be fine but yeah it depends it depends on how much those things bother you and depends on how bad a translation they've done so mm -hmm. yeah um and of course i'm gonna play i love Colonel <laughs> while yeah. eating fried chicken Yes, yes. <laughs> Colonel Sanders. Yes. Oof. Well, um, it's been a good couple of weeks. A good couple of weeks of releases. I think there was something for just about everyone in that show. Um, point and clicks. Yep. I, and yeah. Yeah, I, I think oh, um, there's quite so a lot. Yeah, a lot, a lot of point and click. Um, I, I'm, I'm a bit cold on, um, was it Third Eye? I wasn't, mm -hmm. I wasn't too sure about, about that one. Um, I don't really know much about this doesn't really give you much of the story mm -hmm. so yeah i'm not i'm not too sure about it but mm. neocab that seems interesting as well oh yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. um but yeah so now uh radio tom let the internet know where they can find you um inside dewey's basement where he doesn't let me out except for every couple of weeks to come onto the podcast <laughs> um i've been trapped in this box please please send help uh, he's well fed I... and he gets walks <laughs> <laughs> I have to go potty in the yard. Um, wow, I said this out loud on the internet again. Yeah, hey, I'm uh, I'm streaming and content creating full time. You can find me on YouTube at the Radio Tom, where we got a couple of magic trick tutorials, and then I stream Monday through Friday right over at Twitch.tv/slash The Radio Tom. 
Four thirty till eleven o'clock is our new schedule going forward. Yep. Cool. Well, what about you, Rody? Well, um, you know, eventually I will go back to streaming, but um, you yeah. can just find me on on here. But also, I am um, writing up our um, our uh, the games that we do um, look at on on this podcast. I mean, you can find us over on the um, SR podcast on uh, Steam. So give give that a follow. I'll just give you a link there. Do yep. do give that a follow and. You can keep up with um, all the uh, any any games that you missed in, in past broadcasts. You can um, click on that uh, link, and it will you'll be able to eventually see all the ones that we've spoken about. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> it's an ongoing process. Yes, uh, it's been a year of shows, so there's a lot of games to talk about. Um, but yeah, um, and me, I'm Dewey. I am on here every Sunday. Well, except on the last Sundays, we take that off. But yes, I am here otherwise. And I'm also streaming two other days a week, but it kind of depends on how my weekly schedule goes by. So it'll vary when I show up. Right now, I am streaming Grim Dawn. So going to be streaming more on that. And yeah, just, uh, just enjoying that so yeah thank you everyone who showed up you are all a delight in chat thank you and yeah. uh yeah so um for you for our youtube folks farewell yes Bye. and don't forget to like and subscribe and please leave your comments we do mm-hmm. read them and we read them out on the podcast absolutely um, ring ring the bell yes ring, ring the, the bell. bell see ya bye bye mm-hmm.